Sherry is the Director of Training and E-Learning Development at GP Strategies and has over 17 years of experience designing, developing, and delivering interactive computer-based and web-based learning modules. Her role is to drive innovative ISE techniques into the processes and provide valuable input on state of learning and best-in-class practices. Sherry completed her MS in Learning Sciences and Technology with a focus in gaming instruction at Lehigh University and has also earned uh, her MS in Instructional Design and Development from Lehigh University and a BS in arts educa Art Education from Cudstown University. So with that, Sherry, I am going to go ahead and turn the session over to you. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Kayla, and thanks everyone for joining us today. So today what we're going to be talking about is GP Island Plus. Um, to give you a little bit of background, and hold on one second while I switch over the presentation. So to give you a little bit of background, we're going to go through a little bit of an introduction to GP Island Plus. We're going to go over the benefits, um, and we're also going to do a really quick demonstration. So when we talk about GP Island Plus, a lot of you might be saying, you know, I've never heard of that. Um, you know, it's, it's not a system that I'm familiar with. And really, let me give you a little bit of background. So GP Island Plus is a learning system that we put into place for our technical audiences back in 2002. So really our focus was originally around energy. Um, so that would be any of our energy clients. And we currently have about 46,000 users either using our GPI Learn LMS system or using a content server option. But it was a means of us deploying that content to our customers. Our content does include about 3,200 lessons and exams. We're currently in about 40 different countries. So that gives you a little bit of background about where we're coming from. As we start to talk about, you know, a lot of people, when they look at a learning management system, they think about it from the standpoint of how do I get courses to my learner? We really like to take a more holistic view to not only how you leverage a learning management system, but how you think about training overall. So this is really less about the LMS and more about how you structure your training program from the beginning of the time when the person enters the workforce to all the way up through their career as they might rise through the company. So thinking about doing things like screening exams and hiring tasks, onboarding, um, other tasks that you might do upon hiring to, you know, either qualify a candidate, uh, place them into a specific role, identify areas where they might be deficient from a, a knowledge perspective. You might use them for initial qualifications, such as knowledge tests, skills tests, um, any of the compliances that they might need to have, um, you know, these might be certifications based on health and safety, any of the recalls that they might need to take every year. These are the, some of the things that are often happening outside of a learning management system. They might be just happening in HR, um, particularly when we talk about the technical workforce, a lot of them aren't necessarily using a learning management system at all. Um, so we really encourage our audience and our customers to start to take a more holistic view to training and to employee development and starting to give the learners something that's going to help them get from point A to point B and follow with them all along the way. As we start to look at content, here's just an example of some of the content that we do have out there. We do partner with a lot of different organizations to, you know, really think of it more as like a content aggregation to pull content in from other sources and really make it a one place where you can go to for a lot of different types of information. This is just an example of some of the content that we do have on the system, so it provides you with a very consistent look and feel. Um, you know, easy to use navigation, uh, works in a lot of different browsers. It really is just allowing the learner to access this content and other content that might be available, and that includes content that might be coming from a particular customer. As we talk about how the system itself actually functions, we talk about having this master site. So for some of our customers um, and some of our prospective customers, you might not actually have a lot of employees that you're dealing with. So to be able to embark on a full-scale LMS implementation might be a bit overwhelming. Um, it might be something that maybe you're not quite ready for, and so this is a great solution for that. When we look at our structure, we do have a master site, and that's where all of that information is held. So it's where the courses are held, it's where a lot of the settings are held, and it allows us to put all of that in one nice, neat location. We can then cascade that down to individual subsites that are created for each of our customers. Inside of those customer subsites, 
that allows us to put other information as well, such as other technical courses, client-specific training, third-party training, et cetera. Within each customer site, you do have the ability to branch into other organizations as well. So really thinking more about, again, that learner and what do they need to know and, and how do you want to be able to differentiate information for that learner. So whether you want to be able to communicate information based on their location, based on their shift, uh, based on their region, maybe based on the product, maybe based on the division, those are all the ways in which you're going to group content together or group organizations together into this master site. So really it's just giving our customers a lot of flexibility in how they can break things apart um, so that they can more target their learner population as they need to. So some of the benefits that we do offer with this tool is we do have that enhanced courseware um, and the, simple, the certification process is a lot simpler. There's some other systems that I've used in the past um, and, you know, it really does depend on personal preferences of what's going to work in a particular organization. But sometimes certifications can be really, really tricky. Um, you know, for example, you might have a certification that sits on your learning plan all year long. You might only have to take it once a year. But because it's always there and maybe it's not apparent that you need, you've already taken it, it's not due again for another 365 days, you might have a habit of accidentally taking it repeatedly. So our system actually does a great job in communicating how certifications need to be um, achieved when they're due again and hiding them from that learner's view until they need to be accessed again. We also do have a lot of learner dashboards that help it make it very clear and, con and concise for the learner as to what they need to take next. From an executive standpoint, we have a lot of dashboards that are linked to KPIs um, and competency management framework as well. And then from our administrators, we certainly don't want to leave them behind. We have improved learning paths with a lot of ad hoc reporting, group completion, streamlined course creation. Because one of the other things that I've noticed is a lot of the administrators that we're working with might not actually be coming from a training capability anymore. Um, they might actually be coming from human resources. They might be coming from more of a plant operation perspective. So we have to be cognizant of the fact that they may not have as much time as we'd like them to have. Um, and we need to be able to, to make things as easy on them as we possibly can. So at this point, I'm going to jump to the demonstration. And so if you'll just bear with me for one second. So GP Island Plus is a, a system that's very, very simple to use. I'm going to hop over to the admin menu. From the admin menu, we do have a user summary screen. And that user summary screen allows me to search for any user that I need. So, for example, if I want to log in as this particular individual because I want to see what she's saying, you know, it's a particular challenge that we have often where if we have a learner who is maybe struggling, they can't find something that they're supposed to be taking, um, oftentimes you wind up having to reset their password. It becomes very convoluted to be able to help them. Uh, with our system, you actually do have the ability to log in as that individual, and that's going to give you a view of exactly what they see. So you don't have the ability to take courses for them. We don't have to worry about that. But you do have the ability to do a side-by-side -side with them and show them exactly what they need to do and walk them through it every step of the way. Now, from a, a learner perspective, this is what the learner would see upon logging in. And there's a couple of key areas where we want to draw your attention to. So the first is going to be around job roles. And this is really, again, going back to not necessarily the system itself. You know, we don't want to talk about the software and the capabilities and the, the intricate um, technology behind it, we really want to talk more about the philosophy. So, you know, when you're looking at deploying content to a learner, how are you deploying that content? A lot of times what we have is you get into your learning management system and there's maybe 40 or 50 courses there. And that can be very overwhelming for a learner who's looking at those courses and going, you know what, I don't even know where to begin. Uh, you know, I don't know what these courses are all about. I don't know what's more important than the other. Um, you know, it can just be really overwhelming, and honestly, it can unfortunately lead to the learner just simply logging back out and not taking any courses at all. So there's three different ways in which we recommend grouping content together, and really, again, it's thinking about it from a learning standpoint, not a technology standpoint. So think about um, your job role. 
So as I go into an organization and I'm slotted into a job role, what is, are the important things for me to know? So as a learner, I have the ability to, from my screen, go into my job role. And that's going to give me all the information that I need to know that pertains to my job. So, for example, if I'm looking to advance in my career, if I'm looking to um, work towards being proficient in my career, this is the one-stop shop that I need to go to to access that information. Now, again, this is, there's a lot of consulting that goes into this, and there's a lot of thought that goes into this in what are the licenses and qualifications that are required for a learner um, in this particular job role. Uh, you know, what are the safety requirements that might be, be required? What are the job-based training and tasks that that learner might need to complete or might be recommended? So what we have here is different categories. So we have those licenses and qualifications, and you can see what your current status is. You do the ability to upload a document, and that allows you to store everything in one nice, neat place without having to, to go to multiple locations for information. We also do have the ability to have other sections underneath that as well. So, for example, here's just one of those sections as we talk about job-based training and tasks. You might have other sections that are around health and safety. You might have other sections that are around advanced training. Um, you know, maybe you have things that are related to specific pieces of equipment. Uh, you know, really it's going to vary as to what that learner is going to need to be successful in their role. Now, what you're looking at is actually a variety of different information. It might be on the job training. It might be instructor led training. It's putting all of that blended training together into one location. So what you're trying to do is as a learner now, I know that I can go into GPM and Plus. I can click on this button and I can find everything that I need to know about my job role so that I can be more successful so that I can be more valuable to my organization. Now, as I go back home, you can see that there's some other sections as well. So we have something called a learning path. And a learning path is really as simple as it sounds. A learning path allows us to group content together that's maybe not related to a job role. Um, inside your job role, you could actually have a learning path. Uh, and that really is helping you focus your attention on what's in it for me. So that's a theme that we've often had from a training perspective. It's something that's it's critically important whenever you're doing any kind of a training initiative is to make sure that that learner understands what's in it for me. So from a learning path perspective, I could click on this and it's going to contain all of the different sections that I need to be able to complete. Now you do have the ability to maybe lock section two so that they can't get into section two until they complete section one. You can see that we have all sorts of great status markers here and here and here allowing us to see the current status of each of the individual sections and that learning path overall. As I go into one of my learning paths, I can see that there's, in this case, there's just a pre-assessment that would need to be, be taken. Um, I can see what the language is, and from right that screen, I can click play and launch right into that assessment. So it's making it very easy for me to navigate in, but also giving me some of that what's important. So those sections can be called anything that you would want to, and really it's about how are you organizing your training material. Uh, you know, you might want to think about having a section that might say something like introductory material. Um, you know, you might have something that's maybe some key definitions or background information. You might have sections that are based on the type of training that it is. It really does depend on what your learning solution is and what you're looking for as to how you would group that content together. Now, not everything is so structured. Uh, you know, particularly when we have millennials out there, we know that the millennials aren't necessarily all about structure. We want to make sure that we're providing information in a variety of different formats that's going to work for everybody. So down at the bottom of the screen, I also have my self-paced learning. So that might be either for those one-offs. Um, so you can see equal employment opportunity training with the flag next to it. That's telling me that it's something that's required. It's something that's certified. Maybe it's not related to an entire learning path. Um, it's just something that I need to take. These might be things that I've signed up for myself. Um, so I do have the ability to sign up for courses myself. Those would all appear in the My Self-Paced Learning. So as a learner, when I go into the system, I know exactly where I need to focus my attention. Um, from a system-based perspective, we do have the ability to reorder these in whatever priority you would want them to be in. 
um, and then also have them automatically displayed as well. So really what we're talking about here is, again, thinking about learning and thinking about how people learn best and how we can organize content for them so that it's going to make more sense. Now, we also have some other features that we should go through. Um, some are around the courses due, so you can see that we do have a status meter that's up here in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, we do have announcements. We do have a calendar, so some of the consistent things that you would expect to see. There's a catalog and there's reporting. Um, you know, all of the features that you would expect to see in the learning management system are all accessible from that learner screen. Now, if we go back here and I go and search for another user, and let's take a look at what that manager role looks like. So if I'm a manager, what I'm going to need to know is that I have my own home screen. So I have my own learning paths. I have my own self-paced learning. I also have my own courses due. I also have a manager tab, which is going to give me my team home. So it's incredibly important as a manager that, again, I probably don't have a lot of time. I need to be able to be more focused in managing my employees. I don't necessarily want to, you know, this example is actually just showing that this person has four employees, but we all know that in reality people have many more employees than that. I don't necessarily want to have to run a report on each employee. I don't necessarily want to have to, um, you know, have somebody else run me a report. I want to be able to go into the system when it's convenient for me, and I want to be able to find where my employees are behind, where they need to focus. Um, I that's the kind of information that I need, and, and, you know, I also really don't want to wait for it. From the My Team Home, I have the ability to look at all the employees that I have and be able to tell what their current status is. So, unfortunately, it looks like my team is a bit deficient in training at this point in time, if I'm Jason Donovan. Um, it does look like I need to, to coach them on completing some of their training, and that, that's something that I can easily do from here. Now, other things that we often talk about is, you know, just in time training. So let's say that I'm having a conversation with Paula and Paula's communication skills aren't the greatest. You know, she's having trouble communicating with her colleagues. We're getting some, you know, conversations or complaints that how clear she is or, you know, perhaps even the manner in which she's communicating. Now, I might call Paula into my office and we might talk about that. Um, but maybe I have a module on here for three-way communication. So I have the ability to actually just, right from this screen, enroll Paula in that class via the catalog. So I don't need to submit a form. I don't need to consult an administrator. I don't need to go through any kind of hoops to get that training to Paula. Um, it really allows me to provide that just-in-time training that Paula needs to be successful. So imagine that I can now sit in a room with Paula. I can enroll her via catalog in a course. And by the time she gets back to her desk, that course is already there with an announcement and notification letting her know that that course is available for her to take. That's, what we're, that's how we're able to provide some immediate reinforcement and immediate uh, response to our employees that's going to help us improve our organization. So you can see that our themes, and, and you may be shocked having gone into this thinking that this was going to be all about technology, the themes of this are really about how do we help our employees. How do we help them grow in their careers? How do we help them, you know, improve their performance? How do we really help them, you know, kind of organize themselves, advance their career, and advance their knowledge, and what we can do to provide that level of support? Now, one of the other things that we did talk about from an executive standpoint was dashboards. So from a dashboard perspective, there's a lot of really cool things that we can do. Um, around competency management. So here's an example of managing competencies that are going to give you um, overall competency status for your entire organization. You might be looking at that and seeing that you're currently in the warning area. That might be, a, you know, a signal to you that you need to do something about that. Now, in an ordinary organization, you might then send out a mass email to everybody and say, we, need, we have a problem, we need to address it. What this actually allows you to do is break it down into location. So I now have the ability to look at each location and start to see where I need to focus. Um, or I might look at my job roles and start to look at where I need to focus from a job role perspective. So lots of things to consider and lots of information at your fingertips. Now, if we go to some of the other dashboards, we might want to look at um, certification. So let's say from a certification perspective, we're having some challenges around um, a particular part of the organization. 
where we have an employee who is maybe injured. Um, you know, they're not able to operate a specific piece of equipment. Uh, we need to find somebody else who is able to be certified and be able to operate that piece of equipment for them. Let's say that I'm actually in the Phoenix area. I'm going to select Phoenix. What it's going to do is it's going to rebuild those charts for me so that I have all the information as it pertains to Phoenix. I'm then going to do a drop down, which is going to go to certified. And based on that, I now have all the employees who are currently certified in that particular certification I need. So this gives me a lot of information right at my fingertips to be able to answer any auditor who might be coming in, to be able to answer any questions, or be able to immediately address situations um, right at my fingertips without, again, having to run any reports, crunch any data, um, you know, really helping us be more effective. Now, that does include other data, database um, charts as well. So we want to look at, you know, perhaps instructor performance. So as we look at instructor performance, that might be calling into instructor average rating. So I have a scatter plot allows me to see how my instructors are doing. I also can take a look at the bottom rated instructors so that I see where my trouble points are and where I need to address um, some performance issues. And also look at my top rated instructors. So maybe I need to pair my top rated instructors with my struggling instructors to help boost their performance. So the key here is providing a lot of rich information, a lot of rich data that's going to be able to support us in making good, solid decisions. Now I'm going to show you one more dashboard um, that I particularly find important. And if you'll just give me one minute. So as we talked about all of those learning paths, it's important for us to also be able to manage those. So what we have the ability to do is manage those learning paths from a completion standpoint so that we can start to take a look at the number of days that it's taken for completion, what we're targeting, um, and the number of courses that have been completed in each of those, those months. So we also can do it just from a red, yellow, green status. We can start to break that out from a monthly status so we can see if we look at that chart on the right-hand side. We probably assign these courses in April. And then it looks like probably about three months later, we sent a reminder um, of some sort to remind them to complete these, these learning pathways. So this is a good signifier that our initial communication was probably not effective um, and that we need to be more in line with how we're doing our, our reminder email. We can also start to take a look at those by region. So again, it's the data that you have in the system that you're going to be able to draw from. This allows us to tell what our enrollment is by region and help us make some good decisions around that as well. So one of my big challenges is, you know, we hear a lot of things about big data. You know, we, we have a lot of people who want to capture information related to learning, related to employees, related to completion. You know, as part of my role is actually the development of training programs, constantly ask, well, can we track this and can we track this? Can we track completion and score and time on task? And what I find often is there's either no attention paid to the data that's gathered or the data is all gathered, but then nobody really knows what to do with it. Uh, you know, it takes so long to be able to take that information and break it apart and put it into charts and graphs like this that you can use to make solid decisions that people honestly don't waste their time. So the development of dashboards is going to be a huge time saver for a lot of organizations because it allows them to capture that information. It's updated once an hour. They can really just look at these dashboards, make some key decisions, and continue on. Um, you know, there's not a lot of rework or manipulation of data that needs to occur, which allows you to actually use the data that you're gathering. Um, I'm a big proponent of data is great. It's great to capture that information, but if you're not going to use it, it's not worth capturing. So at this point in time, that does end the demo. Um, let me actually just go back to the presentation. And at the end of this deck, we do have my contact information. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to, to contact me. And at this point in time, we will open it up to the Q&A section. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to jot them either in the Q&A panel or in the chat panel. Um, and we do have some questions that are already in, so let me get started with those. Um, 
So one of the questions that was here is, is there ability to create an instructor-led activity that is offered on multiple days in multiple locations? Um, can I set that activity up so people can register on a particular day and location? Yes, absolutely. Uh, you can actually set up a learning path that might have some online training and then it might have some instructor-led. Within that instructor-led activity, it's going to give them the different offerings that you have available. Um, it will restrict them that they should only sign up for one, uh, but it does give them all of those options to choose from. And then you can actually start to use these dashboards to track your enrollment. Um, so you can start to look at what classes are currently being booked, which might be overbooked, um, where you might need to maybe close out the class and open up a new one to help you make guidance on what are the good days to offer it, what are the good times to offer to make a lot of those key decisions. So that is absolutely a capability of the situation, of, of the uh, system. It's important to remember that from a training perspective, online learning, although a learning management system is, is typically focused on online learning, instructor-led is critically important, particularly in our technical realms. We do want to focus on instructor-led and hands-on training, um, and that's part of what we can help you with from mapping out that curriculum path. It does look like we have one, one minute left for another question. Uh, one of the questions is, is it possible to post XAPI and SCORM 2004 content? Yes, absolutely. Um, so we do accept all of the different formats from um, SCORM to AICC, AICC to XAPI. Um, that's not a problem at all. And then the last question that we have is, so what makes this different from all the other learning management systems that are out there? Well, that's, you know, honestly, it's a really good question. Um, I really think that it's the domain expertise that we can help you out with. Uh, you know, it's the learning guidance that we can help you out with that makes it from just a piece of software that you're implementing where you have to make a lot of those decisions for yourself and, and you know, hope that you've made the right decisions. We're able to assist you with a lot of those and, and you know, give you the pros and cons, give you the, the best case scenarios and worst case scenarios and help you put together a system that's really gonna benefit your organization. So with that, I will turn it back over to Kayla um, to close out the session. Great, thank you, Sherry, for that great demo. Um, again, if you do have a question, we'll go ahead and leave this open for just a minute or two, and what we'll do is, um, as promised, Sherry will be following up with a um, follow-up blog post, and so we'll address some of today's uh, key takeaways, highlights from the demo, and any other questions that we were not able to get to today. So um, if you still have one, be sure to enter it in there. As she mentioned, her contact info is up on the slide deck that you can see here now. And I'd also like to remind everybody that the recording and slides from today will also be emailed to the email address that you provided to us when you registered. So um, just want to say thank you to our speaker, Sherry Weppel, and thank you to everybody who attended for your time and attention. We do hope that you'll join us again for our next TP Strategies webinar on defining good, delivering great, the importance of setting and exceeding expectations for customer satisfaction. That one will be held on August 10th. And for GP Strategies, I am Kayla Roth, and I wish everyone a great day. Thank you.